oasis of blue solar panels stretching as far as the eye can see. This is the Budla Solar Park. The largest solar park in the world in terms of power generation. Located in the Jodhpur district of the Indian state of Rajasthan, the park has a total capacity of 2.25 gigawatt. By comparison, the second largest solar park in the world, China's Huanghe Hydropower Hainan Solar Park has capacity of 2.2 gigawatts. Spread over 14,000 acres, an area almost the size of the European country of San Marino, Badla is a cornerstone of India's bid to become a clean energy powerhouse. The country's installed solar energy capacity has increased 17 times in the past seven years. These plants are connecting and transforming India at an electrifying speed. मुझे ऐसे लगता था कि ये तो सूरज निकला है, लाइट गिरी है। मैं फिजिक्स का स्टूडेंट रहा हूँ मैडम थोड़ा सा। तो ये क्या है कि हीट में कन्वर्ट हो रही है? क्यों ना हम इसको लाइट में बदल लें? आज हर एक घर में सोलर लाइट यूज़ हो जाती है। शाम को तकरीबन दो डायगन कभी कभी होता है तो फिर सोलर लेना ही पड़ता है इसी से काम चल जाता है बच्चे लोग ऐसा पड़ता है दिन में लाइट नहीं जलाने पड़ता था बिल्कुल लाइट नहीं जलाने पड़ता वो वाला नहीं लगाते हैं इसीलिए अपने वो लाइट लाइट नहीं जलाते उसमें अपना काम चल जाता है घर में अंदर होता था चावल चूल्हे में तकलीफ होता था कोई काम भी करने से तकलीफ होता था हम लोग का अंदर अंदर दिन को लाइट का बत्ती का जरूरत नहीं रहता उसमें हो जाता होम टू 1.3 बिलियन पीपल इंडिया रिप्रेजेंट्स 17 परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल पापुलेशन कोल पावर 70 परसेंट ऑफ इंडिया से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जेनरेशन बट इंडिया हैज सेट न्यू बोल्ड क्लाइमेट टार at the 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference held in Glasgow, Prime Minister Narendra Modi introduced the One Sun, One World and One Grid formula. I have a that One Sun, One World, One Grid and Green Grid Initiative is a great and great grid. भारत 2030 तक अपनी नॉन फोसिल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी को 500 गीगावॉट तक पहुंचाएगा। दूसरा, भारत 2030 तक अपनी 50 परसेंट एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट्स रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी से पूरी करेगा। तीसरा, भारत अब से लेकर 2030 तक के कुल प्रोजेक्टेड कार्बन एमिशन में एक बिलियन टन की कमी करेगा। चौथा, 2030 तक भारत अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की कार्बन इंटेंसिटी को 45 परसेंट से भी कम करेगा और पांचवा वर्ष 2070 तक भारत नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य हासिल करेगा। One sun, one world, one grid. As the name suggests, the project aims to tap solar energy and have it travel seamlessly across borders. Jointly led by India and the United Kingdom, the new initiative is called Green Grids Initiative. One sun, one world, one grid. 
Interestingly, the idea of the global solar grid was first floated by Prime Minister Modi in 2018, during the first assembly of the International Solar Alliance. And he pitched the same formula during his Independence Day speech this year as well. The proposal will address the issue of reliability of support from solar power plant, which do not generate electricity after the sun has set. A transnational grid would allow countries to source solar power from regions where it is daytime to meet their green energy needs, even when their own installed solar capacity is not generating energy. As a solar alliance, we are also looking at joining, creating interconnections between different regions of the world. So, for example, when it is dark in East Asia, it's still light in India. You're having solar electricity. If there was a cable between India and East Asia, that solar electricity could be provided to East Asia. Similarly, when it's dark in India, the solar electricity from the Middle East would come here. What this needs is a global interconnection of regional grids. Another problem that will be tackled through this formula is the issue of the high cost of energy storage. One sun, one world, one grid. This is the problem of this is a worldwide grid. Clean energy will be able to get in every place, every time. It will be less than the storage of this storage. And it will also increase the solar projects. From this approach, it will be less than the storage of this storage. कार्बन फुटप्रिंट और ऊर्जा की लागत को तो कम होगी ही अलग अलग क्षेत्रों और देशों के बीच सहयोग का एक नया मार्ग भी खुलेगा But there are plenty of challenges. The transmission of power across vast distances is likely to be an expensive affair. Establishing long transmission lines would require large capital investment. So the first step of Oswog would be solar power transfer between neighboring countries. South Asian countries like India, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar and Nepal already share transmission capacity for energy transfer across borders. This can be expanded further and utilized for the transfer of solar power between these countries as well. To realize this ambitious dream, the Indian Space Research Organization has been roped in to develop a solar calculator. The calculator will be able to gauge the solar potential of any place in the world using satellite data. This means the application will be able to help identify ideal locations to set up solar projects. Exciting, isn't it? India is emerging as a world leader in solar power. In 2019, India gifted solar panels to the United Nations. It gave one solar panel each for the 193 UN member states. These were installed on the roof of the United Nations headquarters in New York. These panels generate a peak power of 50 kilowatt. From installing solar panels on rooftops to setting up massive solar parks, India has ambitious plans to scale up solar energy. It has among the best conditions in the world to harness solar energy. Its location near the equator enables it to receive nearly 300 days of sunshine every year, which is equivalent to 500 trillion kilowatt hours of energy. So why is solar so important for India? We are a tropical uh, country, so there's a lot of sunshine and uh, we get more than 300 days of sunshine every year. So solar power is an obvious choice. Within this decade, India wants to build out a renewable energy power system that is 450,000 megawatts. That's basically creating more power from renewable energy than the entire electricity system today. No country in the world has undergone this kind of a transformation. Let's see how the country is harnessing this never-ending source of energy in different sectors. This is the Cochin International Airport in the South Indian state of Kerala. In August 2015, it became the world's first ever airport to be completely operated on solar power. With an installed solar power capacity of 12 megawatts, which has now increased to 40 megawatts, in 2018 it was conferred the UN Champions of the Earth Award at a ceremony in New York. 
we were the first public private partnership project in the aviation sector in the country we have been with the solar project right from 2013 in 2015 we became the first airport in the world to be completely powered by solar energy we started with a 100 kilowatt pilot project we found that we could produce about 400 kilowatts of power so then we thought why not we scale it up why not make the whole airport completely solar powered in some of the countries we used a lot of money for cutting the weeds we came out with a new idea like why not we grow vegetables underneath last year we produce about 60 tons of vegetable out of that farm which is organically grown also the world's first green airport is now all set to venture into hydropower production the concept of sustainable airport development is gaining momentum in india In 2014, Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport became the country's first airport to get a solar power plant installed with a capacity of 2.14 megawatts. The generated electricity is used for the aeronautical ground lighting systems and supplementary buildings at the airport's airside. The capacity of 2.14 megawatts was increased to 7.84 megawatts in 2016, making the airport largely dependent on green energy. Many airports across the world are embracing renewable energy. Airports have vast swaths of empty land and rooftops, making them ideal hosts for large-scale solar installations. In fact, a new study has found Australia's government-owned airports could produce enough electricity to power 136,000 homes. If they had large-scale rooftop solar systems installed, imagine if all airports across the world follow this. It will be a big step towards net zero emissions. India is optimizing its solar capabilities in other sectors too. Indian Railways is the world's fourth longest rail network in terms of size. The network is spread over almost 70,000 kilometers. Nearly 13,000 passenger trains carry 23 million travelers daily, while about 8,500 freight trains ply 3 million tons of freight every single day from 7,300 stations. Heavily dependent on coal-based power generation, it is also one of the largest electricity consumers in the country. Indian Railways has recently announced ambitious plans to become a net zero carbon emitter by 2030. A cornerstone in the net zero goal achievement of the railways is 100% electrification of all broad gauge routes and this is nearing completion. The net zero goals hinge on solar deployment. Solar rooftops at railway stations are starting to become a common sight across India. This is the Katra station in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. In 2015, the Northern Railways powered the Katra railway station with a 1 megawatt peak rooftop solar grid, a move that experts believe can save up to 1 crore rupees or $134,000 annually on energy bills. A 5 megawatt solar installation has also been commissioned on four central railway stations in Delhi. Indian Railways has equipped more than 900 railway stations in the country with solar power and another 550 stations are to be solarized with rooftop panels soon. Another exciting project in 2017 under the Make in India initiative, India launched its first solar powered train in New Delhi. A total of 16 solar panels each producing 300 watts are installed on the roof. The train is also equipped with a battery bank which ensures it can run even without sunlight. 3 years later in 2020, India's first solar energy driven miniature train was opened for tourists in Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala. These projects are not one-off wonders. They are steps in the right direction. According to a recent report published by Climate Trends and Riding Sunbeams, the Indian Railway can offset around 7 million tons of carbon every year if it harnesses the energy from the sun. And if one in four trains on the national network is powered by solar energy, Indian Railways could save 170 billion rupees or 2.3 billion dollars in fuel cost. Can India achieve this goal? The policy is there the targets have been set the technology is known what is needed now for india 
is much larger volumes of capital, of finance to come in to be able to deploy these renewable energy systems rapidly. The rapid growth of solar power in India has breathed hope into the country's efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Did you know that the Delhi Metro is powered by solar energy from Madhya Pradesh? The Delhi Metro Rail Corporation aims to be the world's first 100% green energy rail network. A mega solar park in Rewa sells almost 24% of the energy produced to DMRC, meeting almost 60% of its daytime demand. India's agriculture sector too is witnessing a solar-powered revolution. Solar water pump irrigation technologies have proven to be a boon to millions of villagers who were heavily dependent on conventional energy. With no operating cost involved and the promise of a reliable supply of water, these solar water pumps are truly game changers. When a farmer is able to generate power from their, from their solar uh, uh, plant near their farm and pump out water, when a, uh, a rural uh, person is able to run a textile unit using solar power on top of their roof, we are then able to bring the energy transition closer to people. So of course we will need the very large plants to lay out the large capacity. But I think the real opportunity will lie in a much more distributed network of renewable systems spread across the country. India's green energy has increased fivefold since 2011 to reach 100 gigawatt in 2021. The goal is to ramp up this capacity to 450 gigawatts by 2030, a more than fourfold growth. The sector needs to evolve rapidly to achieve this ambitious goal. Currently, solar power accounts for 4% of electricity generation. Experts say the country is some way from reaching its green targets, with coal set to remain a key part of the energy mix in the coming years. Considering the, the size and scale, there should have been more than 30 Vikram solars today in India, even more. That's the kind of demand and that's the kind of ecosystem that India would essentially need. And uh, I think uh, it's going to happen, but it should have happened soon. So how can India harness the full power of the sun for clean energy? The answer lies in innovation. In the states of Punjab and Gujarat, these solar canals are making smart use of space. In the port city of Visakhapatnam, India's largest floating solar power project recently became commercially operational. The project in Andhra Pradesh will power around 7,000 households and also prevent 46,000 tons of CO2 emission annually. The one-of-a-kind project is also expected to help save around 1,364 million liters of water per annum by preventing evaporation from the reservoir. India is now focusing on increasing the domestic manufacturing capacity of solar cells and modules to meet the high demand and minimize reliance on imports. In April, the Union Cabinet approved a production-linked incentive scheme. With an outlay of 4,500 crore Indian rupees or 600 million dollars to add 10,000 megawatt capacity of integrated solar PV modules manufacturing plants. And now, India's giant strides in solar development have been boosted by the announcement of the One Sun, One World, One Grid initiative. It has all it takes to become a solar superpower.